Hello, uh, Katrina, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Thank okay, you. Susan, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so it is 11.30 and <clears throat> we're starting our webinar. So welcome everyone. We are very excited to have you all here today and this is Katrina Stoops, uh, e-learning faculty development coordinator. So we are delighted to continue our CSI web workshop series that we started this year. And as you all know, CSI stands for Connect, Share, and Inspire. And our goal for this webinars, for this workshops, is to share teaching brass practices and connect with our fellow colleagues. Today, we will talk about Grade Center, and our presenter, Erin Thornberry, will share simple tips to help you make the most that Grade Center and its tools have to offer. So during this workshop, you will have many, many opportunities to um, participate in discussions, ask questions, share your ideas. Uh, so to participate in these discussions, you can use chat, type your questions and comments there. But as I mentioned earlier, we would um, actually, in, we would like to encourage everyone to use um, your microphones and speak. But then when you're not speaking, please keep your mics muted so that we're not getting any background noise. If you do not have a microphone, you can call into the session by clicking on the icon that looks like a menu. It's up uh, on the top. It looks like a menu. And then select Use Your Phone for Audio. So if you have any technical issues during this workshop, you can use chat to let us know about the issue you're experiencing. And now I would like to introduce our presenter, Erin Thornberry. Erin is the Director of e-learning at City University of, of Seattle. She oversees the administration of Blackboard and associated uh, academic technologies for CityU. Erin also advises faculty on best practices in instructional design and learning technologies. Erin has designed and taught educational technology courses for CityU and University of Tennessee. Erin has a bachelor's degree in art education from the Pennsylvania State University and a master's in instructional um, technology from the University of Colorado. She is currently working on her doctorate in learning and leadership at the University of Tennessee. And without further ado, Erin, please take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I just want to get my video turned on there. I always forget the video part, so I want to make sure that I get that turned on. Um, the objectives for this workshop that you all have signed up for is, um, as e. Katrina said, to help you make the best of your time in the Grade Center, to give you some tips and tricks that hopefully will make you more efficient, will catch um, or prevent some of those common pitfalls that my team and I see quite frequently with faculty using the Grade Center. Uh, and then also to, um, for those of you who haven't seen it before, make sure that you become familiar with the students' view of the Grade Center um, so you can help them troubleshoot when they say, hey, you know, I don't see your feedback, I can't find that rubric, um, I don't know what's due. Uh, you can kind of point them in the right direction. So. That's what I have planned, and I'm basically going to take you through um, what I do when I'm preparing for my course, but this is really your workshop. I know lots of you have experience in the Grade Center, and so I wanted to give you an opportunity to help direct the things that I show or the tips that I give. Uh, so if you have things that you would particularly like me to cover or talk about, uh, I'd like to hear about them now. And we're going to, I'm going to ask Whitney, I think she joined again, yes, to uh, take some notes and put them up on the board for me. Um, so, and I'm going to take some notes so I can make sure to cover them when I do the demo. So is there anything in particular that you would like to see? or have me talk about? Yeah, the, this is Brian Turner chiming in here. I just want to say thank you for offering this. Uh, this is my first class, first term with City University. So uh, I did the, uh, like the pre-course um, preparation 
uh, or the new faculty orientation, but that's really the extent of my experience right now. So um, please, if you think something is real basic and you, you question whether to cover or not, consider me your uh, least uh, informed student here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that, Brian. And actually, um, that's a really good point. So we ha do have a diversity of experience within the room. I can see some of our um, administrative faculty have joined who have been working in Blackboard for a while. So I will be kind of doing things on different levels. So if you get lost at a certain point, don't hesitate to stop me. Um, for those of you who are um, very familiar with Blackboard, if you will, be patient uh, and realize that there are some people who are just getting started, so we're going to try to cover a lot of base, a lot of ground, I should say. And I see Cindy has added uh, pros and cons of weighted totals. Okay. Basic things instructors should know about from Brian. Anything else? Okay, showing the city you um, scale and the and a percentage. Okay, great. Okay, let me just make sure I have all of those down. Extra cut it? Okay. <laughs> All right. I have a big list, so that is probably good. If you do have a question along the way, don't hesitate to type it in chat, uh, and I will hopefully be able to uh, see that as I do this demo. If I could get my mouse back from across the screen. There we go. Okay, so I am going to share my screen and uh, demo some of uh, Blackboard. So bear with me while I get my screen up. Okay, you should see a lovely reflection, and hopefully now you see my, whoops, you see my course. Does everybody see the student orientation course? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so the first thing that I do when I am starting out, and let's let's just say classes haven't started yet. So I've just gotten my class, and I'm uh, ready to start making sure that the grade center is in a good place. Uh, the first thing I do is add my student preview account. So you want to hit that little icon up in the upper right-hand corner, and now I am in student preview mode. You see this uh, yellow bar across the top, which indicates that I'm in the student preview mode. And I can go through my course as I would if I were a student taking this class. Um, I'm just adding this user so that I can use them in the Grade Center to test some things and so that I can show you in a little while what the Grade Center uh, looks like from the student perspective. So I'm in it, and I'm just going to exit. Exit preview, and you should be prompted to either save the student data that you're working with, um, and that means it's going to, if you submitted an assignment using this uh, user account, if you submit a discussion board post, it's going to keep all of that information, um, or you can delete it if you don't want that to kind of muddy up your grade center. I'm actually going to keep it. So I'm going to toggle this to keep uh, the preview user and all of its data because I want to see that user in the Grade Center and actually use him as if, uh, or her, I should say, because she's my preview user account, um, use them as if they were a student in the class to do some testing. So after I've changed that setting, click Continue. And it will take a second to take me back into the instructor view. 
So now I am going to go to the Grade Center and the Full Grade Center. And depending on what computer you're working on, hopefully you have a nice big screen that you can work with. Uh, you might find that the Grade Center is a little cramped. There's a lot of information, particularly if you have 10 discussion boards to work with. So what I like to do if I'm going to be working in the Grade Center for a while is collapse the menu, the course menu, to uh, the left. So if you hover over just beside the course menu, you'll see that little gray bar appear and a little arrow. And I can click on that and it will collapse the, the menu to the left and now I have a full screen view of the Grade Center. So it just allows me to see some additional columns that I wouldn't otherwise ha uh, be able to see. I would have to kind of scroll a little bit more to the right and the left. You see that I just have a few test user accounts in here because, again, this is uh, just a demo uh, that I've created for the purpose of this webinar. Uh, but at the bottom, you can see my preview user account's been added. And so I'm going to use that in a minute to test to make sure that my Grade Center calculations are working like they should. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I'm in the, this full view of the Grade Center is I'm going to check to make sure that all of my columns are visible to students and that I get rid of any duplicate columns that I don't need. So let's start all the way over on the right or the left, sorry. I could see I have a total here. And here's another total, and this is actually the um, this is the city use scale that I believe Susan was asking about. So I have added that uh, column to my to this particular course so that students can see what their uh, city U four point scale grade is going to be in the calculation. Um, so I'm going to keep both of those totals for right now. And as I scroll across, I can see I have some columns that have red marks next to them, the little red slashes. That tells me that my students actually can't see those columns and there's no reason for them not to see them. So I'm going to make sure that those are visible to my students uh, by clicking on that little arrow beside the name of the column and then selecting um, show to students. So Hide from students on and off is what I want. And that should remove that little slash. Here I have another one. And I want to make sure that that is off. So those columns are now visible to my students. Towards the end, I have, there's another total. And this is something that commonly happens uh, when courses, you all know, are copied off of a master shell. Sometimes it creates creates extra totals, um, or sometimes you might miss one of the, the calculated columns in there. I see I have a total and two weighted total columns at the end, and I definitely don't want all of them. Uh, but there's a trick to actually deleting them. Um, you probably, in most cases, are going to want to keep the column that's the oldest, um, and I'll show you where that date is, because that means that that column, especially if it's a weighted total, has the settings from the master. It is the column that was copied uh, from the master shell, not recreated when the course was copied itself. So I'll show you how to determine which of those columns to delete. But I'm going to want to delete one of these totals and one of these weighted totals. You might also notice that you have additional um, assessment columns. And, or some, some other columns in your courses that you, that you don't think you want or you know you don't want. Um, you can delete these if you don't need them. Um, but something to look for is if you click on a column to delete it, so here's a good example. Um, the group column, I can delete. That means it's not linked to any assessment in my course. It is um, just a freestanding column. So I can delete that if I didn't need it for this course. I actually do want it in this class, so I'm going to leave it. The assignment, on the other hand, or even, let's say, this discussion board, I have no option to delete that column. And that means that's because it is set up for grading and it is linked to some assessment in the course. So if you needed to delete, if you know you don't need module two, discussion forum, 
and you want to delete it, you have to go and find that discussion and delete it first. And it should also prompt you to delete the column in the Grade Center. So can't see that delete option, you need to go and find the assessment and delete that first. Okay, so I have all of my uh, columns set up. Um, they're visible to my students. And I know I need to delete some columns, but I want to see what date they were created before I go ahead and delete them. So I'm going to move on to my next uh, step, which is under Manage and Column Organization. And here is where I can see, excuse me, the date that a column was created. So here we have a total. This first one was created on the 14th, and the other one was also created on the 14th. So I can delete either one of those columns. It's probably not going to make a difference. Plus, the total column typically doesn't have a lot of settings associated with it. That would be unique from one to the other. However, in terms of the weighted total, I see I have one that was created on the 14th, which was when the course was um, copied, I believe, and then one that was uh, created today, actually. So that's the newer one, and that's the one that I'm going to actually delete. So I can't delete the column from this screen, unfortunately. So I'm going to make a note to myself. Uh, I have a little notebook next to me, and I'm going to be making some notes about the things that I notice on this screen that I need to go and, and change um, someplace else. So I need to delete the last weighted total. And then uh, I also notice that I have a hidden column. I have this evaluation that is hidden from me in the Grade Center. My students may or may not be able to see it, but I definitely can't see it. So I want to make sure that any hidden column is also um, visible to me in the Grade Center. And so I check beside it, come down to Show Hide, and say Show Selected Columns, so I can see that one. This um, Manage Column Organization view is also great for reviewing your due dates. So here I can see all of the due dates that I've set for this course. And everything has a due date except uh, this Collaborate recording. And I know that I want to set a due date for that. And this uh, end of course evaluation has a due date that is not appropriate for this course. So I'm going to make some notes to myself to change those due dates so that they're reflective of the actual schedule that I'm sharing with my students. The other thing that's really easy to check in this view is the point value for your assignments uh, and other assessments that you have in your course. So here I see uh, everything looks good except for module two. Um, I'm using a weighted total in this course, and so I'm setting everything to 100, and then I'm going to apply the weights um, to actually uh, disseminate the point values for the assessments in the course. So I know that module two should be worth 100 points. So that's another thing that I need to change. The last thing I'm going to check, because I am using weighted total, is the categories that I see here too. Um, my discussions are all going to be worth 30 points or 30 percentage points, so I want to make sure that they are all in the same category. So, yep, they are all in the discussion category. I have a percentage that my assignments are going to be worth, or my one assignment is going to be worth, and a percentage that the one test is worth. And then these other elements uh, that say no category, uh, I also want to be worth a certain percentage point. So I'm going to change their category by checking the box next to them. So group, collaborate, recording. I want to change the category so that I can use it in my weighted total. So now they're set to other, and I will use that and show you in a second how I'm going to use those categories in my weighted total. And the survey should be worth zero and is not going to be included in the weighted total. 
So everything else looks pretty much in order here. Uh, the other thing that you might check is uh, up at the top, this the gray area that you see, these first two items, is typically the first two items. Um, you can see there's a little note that says anything above this bar is frozen. Um, that means that you will see, as far as you scroll to the right or the left, you will always see those two items. This is another opportunity where you might be able to save a little room in the Grade Center. If you are familiar with all of your students' last names and they're all unique, you don't have two Smiths or um, two Thornberries, uh, you might be able to move the first name into uh, the unfrozen section so that you're just seeing the last name as you scroll across. I think I have uh, all unique last names in this course, so I'm going to go ahead and, and at, free up some extra space by doing that. Do I have any questions about anything that I've covered so far? I know I'm moving kind of quickly. No? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and submit those changes. Now you can see my frozen column is just the last name. And uh, all of my columns are now visible. So I see that end of course evaluation is also visible to me in this view. And there's no slash next to it, so it means it's also visible to students. So Susan, can you go ahead and ask a question, Erin? Yeah, OK. She'd like to know, why is the EOCE in the gradebook? Um, that is because this is a student orientation course, and they don't get the end of course evaluation, but I still want to get their feedback on how they felt the orientation prepared them. Uh, so it's it's a it's a slightly different course. It's a continuing education course. <coughs> Great, thank you. Great. All right. Um, I also, based on my notes, I need to delete this last weighted total. I'm going to go ahead and delete that column. And I wanted to delete one of these totals because I have two of them as well. And I am actually going to, again, for me, as much as I can see of the Grade Center at one time really helps um, really helps me tell where my students are, how they're doing, what's coming up, what's missing for certain ones of them. So I really try to maximize all the space that I can. Um, so the other thing I know is that I don't need their usernames here. Their last names and their first names are plenty of information for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, the username from instructor view. And that's just going to give me a little bit of extra time. I also don't need their user IDs. Some of you might. Uh, if you have students who have names that are really similar or exactly the same, you might need that user ID as the reference. Uh, but I know my students' last names in this course, so I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And all of my student accounts are available, so I also don't need that column. So that's just giving me more and more room in the Grade Center to really get a full picture of what's going on. Uh, as I mentioned, my students are in this class, I'm using the weighted total. So I don't want them to see the point value for this course, because it is not um, indicative of the grade that they're going to receive. So I'm actually going to, I kind of want to see the points, so I'm going to hide this um, from my students' view. So I can still see it check out the point values, um, but my students aren't going to be confused about what their grade actually is in the class. So those are just some basic changes to kind of make some space in here. The other thing that I meant to show you in Manage Column Organizations, so we're going to jump back there real quick. Um, 
is that this is where you reorganize your columns. I kind of showed you how you could drag and drop columns down out of the frozen area. But you also want to organize your columns in a logical way within your course. Um, I like to do it chronologically by when things are due. How it helps me because I can actually work through the Grade Center from uh, left to right. Uh, but it also, that's the default view that your students are going to see. So it also presents things in their view of the Grade Center in a chronological manner as well. So um, you can use the due dates if those are visible uh, to, or if you, you've assigned due dates to arrange your columns in chronological order uh, by dragging and dropping. So um, I see that module four comes after the group assignment, so I'm just going to drag that down and put that in order. Again, after you make any changes in here, you just need to remember to click submit to save those changes. Okay, so the last, or there's two more things I want to do. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm using the weighted total, so I'm going to check out that weighted total and make sure that what I see there is matching what I have indicated in my syllabus. So those point values, again, everything was 100%. Um, so I'm using the weighted total to set up that match between what my syllabus says assignments are and assessments are going to be worth, and uh, how the Grade Center is calculating. So edit column information is going to bring up the weighted total. And I'm going to check to make sure that this is set up the way that it should be. So I see the other category. And remember, this was, um, actually, if I drag this back across, uh, exit out and find it. This was the category that I changed some of my assessments to. If I click other, I can see just below it the assessments that are included in this category. So this is the collaborate recording and the group activity are in this other category. And that I want to include in my weighted total and is worth 20% of the grade based on what I say in my syllabus. So everything else looks good. Uh, here again is the discussion category. So any category uh, where you have multiple assessments grouped into one category, I'm going to pull from this bottom box. If I have singular assignments or quizzes um, or other assessments that are worth a certain percentage in and of themselves, I'm going to pull them from the columns to select at the top and then make sure that everything adds up to 100% over here and matches what I say in the syllabus. So that all looks good. So I think I'm ready to go there. And last but not least is that preview user account. Um, how I use this is to double check my Grade Center calculations. So I don't necessarily need to submit anything as that student, although that's a helpful activity to do too, to make sure that your assignments appear the way you want them to. Um, but I can go through and uh, give grades to this user. And watch how they calculate. So over here I'm seeing uh, the weighted total. And obviously if I'm giving them 100 across the board, uh, that weighted total should be reflecting that. I'm not sure why it says 175%. That is weird. So that's an indication to me that something is off, right? 160%. 140, and I think I know what the issue is, actually. Um, total. Was that a question? That is, is that a question? 
Michelle stating not everything is worth 100 points. That's right. I had one assignment. I had something that I was supposed to change, right? This one, I think, was the one. Module 2, yeah, that I was supposed to change the point value. Thank you, Michelle. And there we go. That resolved the issue. So you can see, actually, that worked out quite well. <laughs> it's a great example of um, how if you're, I think one of the questions was about, you know, the benefits of weighted total over uh, total uh, using just points, actually. Um, weighted total is definitely a little more complicated to set up. I always work with every assignment is worth 100 points and then applying the weights to categories or individual assignments um, to spread out that point value. So I have three discussion boards worth 20% um, of the grade, so it's basically 20 points distributed over uh, three discussion boards. Um, that is the most basic way to do uh, a weighted total. Uh, the benefit of that is it gives you a little flexibility in adding or removing discussion boards throughout the course because you're not going to impact uh, necessarily. It's, again, it's going to make each discussion board worth a little bit more or a little bit less as you go through, but it doesn't have quite as much impact as just taking out an entire discussion board that might have been, or let's say taking out uh, an entire activity that might have been worth um, 10 points. And some of your students might have been saying, well, you know, I have that 10 points coming up. Uh, it's okay that I didn't do that one discussion board. I'll make up some points for it uh, doing that activity. And if you remove it, then they kind of, you know, their plan is foiled, if you will. So um, using weighted total gives you a little bit more flexibility, but does add complexity and the student's ability to really see where they are in the course if you're not giving them um, a formula that they can use to calculate their grade and, and, and kind of gauge where they are in the course. So um, point values are the most straightforward uh, but can be difficult to deal with if, if there's any kind of hiccup in the class, um, if that helps at all. Uh, there was a question about the scale. So here you can see uh, how that scale appears and uh, basically uh, this is a regular uh, calculated column, total column, where the primary display is set to the city U scale. And you can see there are some other city U uh, scales in there as well. So that was just a uh, great um, total column and then under the, the score uh, display, you, you select this, the city you scale to get that, that point value. So let's see. Um, extra credit was the only other thing I think that uh, came up as uh, what people wanted to see. My approach to using extra credit is to create a basic column. Um, you can either call it extra credit or maybe it's extra credit on a particular assignment. So you might say extra credit for assignment one or something like that. Um, and the key here is to set the point value to zero. Um, that way, and this really doesn't work very well with weighted totals. Um, it works better if you're just using straight points. Uh, because using a weighted total, you have to, you kind of put the extra credit on top of the total. So you'd have to create another calculated column that takes the weighted total and factors in the extra credit. Um, it works better if you're just working with straight points, setting it to zero points possible. So when you go to actually, I'll just submit this um, so you can see. 
when you go to actually give students extra credit, give them two extra credit points, it's adding that two on top of uh, the total points possible. So if we go to the total column that's hidden from my students, I can see those two extra credit points. So there's 700 possible points in this course, and the student has gotten two extra credit points on top of that. Were there questions that came in? I thought I heard some. Brian asked uh, why is that, um, but I'm not quite sure what he means by I that. Think my comment, because I said extra credit is evil, I think he might have been <laughs> wanting to know why. Because I had oh. an issue last week with extra credit, and Michelle helped me with it. Um, I think we worked it out, and in theory, it makes sense. It's mm -hmm. just that it was a grade book that had a couple different issues, and it was complicated. Yeah, it can get a little complicated. This is pretty much the most straightforward way of doing it. So if you offer opportunities for extra credit throughout the course of your, um, of your class, you can uh, add them up in this one column and you can actually add these uh, quick comments so um, if this is my one extra credit column I could say for assignment one uh, you received one extra credit point and then and then maybe they on the group assignment they received one extra credit point to kind of help you keep track of where the, to help you and your students, your students will see these comments, keep track of where those extra credit points are coming from. Uh, that's probably the most straightforward forward way to do it. The other thing that you could do is uh, add them on to an assignment while you're grading it and put it in the notes um, that you've added extra credit to this assignment for doing this, that, or the other thing. So. Um, so I'm going to move along because I just have a couple additional things to share with all of you. Basically, that's what I go through when I am um, preparing for a course. Now, uh, let's say the course, the, oh, the last thing actually I was going to show you before the course gets started um, is what it looks like for students. So we're going to jump back into that student preview mode. And I'm going to go to My Grades. And this is the student preview mode user's My Grades view. So unlike the other students in your class, um, he, this person has received all 100s on everything. Uh, so they're very pleased with themselves. But you can kind of you can get an idea of what the students see. There's those extra credit. And there are my comments that I added. So they can see where those extra credit points came from. Um, you'll see that the view that they have is in the order in which the columns appear within the Grade Center, but they can also change that order. So uh, they can change it by last activity, by the due date, um, or you know the oldest first, whatever they choose. But by default, it's going to be whatever the Grade Center uh, displays. And then they also have these other items across the top to help them filter what they see in the Grade Center. But you can see they um, can see what the assignment is, what the due date for that assignment is, and then uh, if there is the category in which it appears, and then if there's a rubric available for uh, that assignment. So this is a quick way, actually, for you as an instructor using the preview user account to make sure that your rubrics are linked to assignments and then are visible to students. So this course only has one rubric for the one assignment, uh, but you might want to make sure if you're using a discussion board rubric that that's visible to your students and they can see it as well. Was there a question? So, yeah, so we, uh, has a question of where do they see my... Where do they see, I'm sorry, what? Where do they see what? So the question is, where do they see my feedback? Oh, where do they see your feedback? Um, so they will see your general feedback in a comment bubble just like this. 
that will be the summative feedback that you provide after you have um, completed the rubric. If you are providing feedback on your rubric, on the rubric itself, uh, they will see that feedback <clears throat> when they click view rubric. Your feedback will appear here. If you are providing inline text feedback on an assignment, they will actually see that in this view. So they need to click on the assignment and um, they will see your inline, if you're using Crocodox and inline feedback within Blackboard, they'll see it here. If you're attaching feedback, they'll see it in that comment bubble that I was showing you earlier. So there's a couple different places. And uh, Michelle's actually just created a great tutorial about how, where to see feedback on uh, rubrics, because our students have trouble sometimes finding that feedback. Any other questions? I will keep it. Okay, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm uh, going to move forward real quickly. And so uh, the last couple things that I had to share with you are after the course has gotten started, um, what are some tips and tricks to uh, make you more efficient? So as students start submitting assignments, I love this needs grading. Um, Smart view. It pulls up any and all assignments that have been submitted to a course, and you can power through all of those assignments um, from one screen. So I'll click on Amy Portwood, it will open her assignment. I can grade that and then uh, submit it, and it will take me to the very next assignment. The downside to using needs grading is it doesn't care what type assignment it is. So if you have students submitting discussion board posts, assignments, other activities, everything's going to come up uh, kind of in the order in which it was received. And so you might be jumping from grading an assignment to grading a discussion board. And if that messes with your, uh, your flow, you might prefer to use one of these uh, smart views to work just with assignments. So if I click on assignments under full grade center, I'm just going to see the assignments that have been submitted and I can grade those um, as I normally would, uh, kind of moving through uh, the assignments from the attempts. Um, what I like to do, um, especially for really large classes, uh, is I will hide if I'm if I'm grading the uh, assignment, let's say assignment one, and I know I'm not going to get it done in a day, I, and it might take me two or three days, hopefully just two days, to get through all of them. I will actually hide this column from students while I'm grading, and then show it to students so that they all get their feedback at one time and I don't have students kind of contacting me before I've completed my grading. Um, so that's something that I do. The other thing that I will um, do is after I've graded something, I will hide that column from my Grade Center view so that, again, I'm maximizing space. I've already graded it. It's done. I don't need it anymore. So I will hide it. Um, but before I hide it, I will also, um, I will do this assignment file download, and that's going to take all of my student submissions and save them to a zip file, which I store with my, on my uh, computer hard drive, so that I have a record of all of my students' um, assignments. Um, for a particular assessment. And um, that's because I also will download after the course is completely finished and everything's graded, I have my final grades and they all look good, um, I will also download, so work offline, download the entire grade center so that I have uh, the grade that my students received on each assignment, um, each assessment within the course. And I save that with all of their, their work for my records. Was that a question? Cindy no. asked, where do you save all that? 
Um, it is just has been my um, practice in teaching is to save uh, a copy of those assignments. I have students who contact me who are looking for things that they submitted for uh, portfolios and later classes, and um, I can pull them up for them um, if I, you know. I don't want to say deem them worthy, but uh, you know, if I if I want to help them out, I can I can pull those back up. Um, if there's any question about um, you know a grade grievance or anything like that, I I have records of of the grade center that I can reference without necessarily having to pull up the entire course again. Um, so it's personal preference. You don't is that necessary? But it's helped me in the past, so it is typically what I will kind of get in a rhythm of doing in the class. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing I wanted to share with you, and I am really running out of time, is this uh, filter option. This is a really small class, so this isn't necessarily very helpful. But um, you can use the filter to... Um, help you contact students who, so let's say assignment one, I the majority of my students did great, but I had a sprinkling of students who were late and I want to see what's going on. And the easiest way uh, to do that is to, um, you know, I could filter by assignments. Um, the status is um, not attempted. And there I have my assignments, the two students who, uh, Michelle and Whitney, who didn't complete their assignment. I can check the box next to their name and email those users and say, hey, I noticed uh, you did not uh, complete this assignment. What's going on? Is there a question? Uh, yeah. Assignments or discussion. I'm sorry? What happens when you want to delete assignments or discussion? What happens when you want to delete an assignment? Um, an individual student submission of an assignment or an entire assignment? An individual submission, is that right, Virginia? Entire assignment. Oh, um, so if I want to delete Assignment one, for example, I would go to assignments and tests because I know I can't delete it from the Grade Center. Um, and I would have to delete it here. And this is going to tell me um, it should tell me. Yes. Uh, so it's going to prompt you. You know, it says you have things in the Grade Center, students submitted to this, you want to preserve the scores in the Grade Center, or do you want to delete this assignment entirely as well as the column that's associated with it? Um, you don't want to do this if students have already su submitted to an assignment. So that right there, I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to delete students' work. Um, but if you're setting up for your cur course early on, uh, you would select the second option. Um, and click cancel and it will delete the assignment as well as the associated column. And then a similar question, what happens when you want to delete categories from the master shell? Um, so categories, and I'm going to have to wrap it up after this, but um, so to delete categories you want to go to manage and um, categories and you can delete categories. These are all categories in this course uh, from this screen. So check the box next to them, click delete. It's not going to let you delete uh, categories that have things associated with them. So if you want to delete a category that has uh, an assessment associated with it, you have to go and remove that assessment from that category. And I showed you how to do that um, earlier in this session. Uh, but it's really easy to get rid of um, categories within your course if you don't want to use them, um, but most of the time you can just kind of ignore them. All right, so I'm going to jump back over to our presentation, which was here. And
go back to our final slides. Um, I still see that there are some questions coming in. Um, I will work to answer as many as the, of those questions as I can uh, in chat, or if you have time, I will hang out after the session and would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to E. Katrina. For those of you who really do only have 45 minutes today, I apologize for going over time, and um, we'll let her take it away. Any questions, this is how you can contact us. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, it was a very good uh, presentation, and thank you, everyone, for your questions. Uh, and I have just a couple of very quick announcements. Um, so I would like to advertise two more webinars that we we have scheduled for this quarter. So the next one is in May, and the topic is creating a great student experience. So the presenter, Joel Domingo, will share his strategies for engaging students. And in that workshop, uh, the participants will explore ways to transform online student experience. So if you haven't registered for this workshop, please do register as soon as possible. We have just a few seats left. And the last workshop for this quarter is in June. The topic is Engaging Resources for Teaching, and we will have two presenters, Mary, the Director of Library Services, and Carolyn, uh, Associate Director of Instruction. And they will talk about library resources that faculty can embed directly in Blackboard. Uh, participants will also re explore recommended websites, web resources for additional course content. So, and that is all for today. Thank you again for participating, for questions, and thank you, Erin, for a great presentation. And um, so that's all. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.